and welcome to the show, everybody! We are doing fish today because it is, of course, do I need to do welcome to the show again? Welcome to the show! I had to make sure I got my graphic up there. All right, if you're joining me right now, give me a hashtag number one in the comments. Let me know where you're listening from. If you listen later, give me a hashtag to let me know where you're listening from while I go through my opening remarks. A couple things that you need to have ready. You need to have your sous vide machine ready, or you need to have a pot with water ready. Um, and it could be a smaller pot than this. This is specifically for my sous vide maker. It has to have the depth, okay? Um, you could do this on a burner. If you do decide to do it on a burner with water, you're going to need a thermometer. Um, it's going to look something like this here. Okay, that's going to be able to give you the temperature. We are going to be cooking at 135 degrees. So go ahead and get your sous vide maker um, going at 135 degrees. The other thing that you're going to need is your reduction sauce. And just a reminder what goes in your reduction sauce. You're going to put this in a saucepan. All right, saucepan as you see here. Um, that is going to be, there's two juiced oranges in here or the juice of two oranges. There is the juice of one lemon, a half a cup of Bragg's liquid aminos, a half a cup of bo chicken bone broth, one teaspoon of grated orange zest, one half teaspoon of ginger, one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. That's what's in here, okay? So you need to get that going, that ready. Once you have that ready, go ahead and turn your burner on high we need to bring that to a boil. Again, right now, you're gonna get your sous vide heated up to 135 degrees, okay? My sous vide, this thing is super simple to use. I have, in the recommended products tab, I have this uh, machine listed, I think it was $80 on Amazon, um, and uh, free shipping, all that good stuff, and this thing is super easy to set and use. Very, very, very simple. It's, the instructions are like two pages. It was super easy, super simple. Um, so we, this is one of my favorite ways to cook. It's really fun. And um, you're going to need a Ziploc bag. Okay, so I have my Ziploc bag here. You need a Ziploc bag. And then what we're going to be cooking today in sous vide, which by the way, sous vide means in a vacuum. It's French for in a vacuum. It originated in um, the 70s, 1975-ish. And uh, a French chef um, developed this way of cooking and is really considered the father of sous vide cooking. But interestingly enough, he would cook things at much higher temperatures than is generally accepted today with sous vide cooking. What makes sous vide cooking so great is you can constantly, mo um, constantly um, monitor the temperature that you're cooking at so you don't overcook and so you don't, when you overcook, you tend to really dry things out. Because of the way you cook sous vide, you don't dry things out, you keep all those juices, and for those of you who are on the lose it stage of the Vital Life program, this is a great way to cook to have really flavorful, juicy, amazing tasting foods. Um, so anyway, do look up, there is different d temperatures that you cook and different times that you cook with some things. There are some things that take hours to cook, and there are some things like we're doing here that uh, are going to take us about 15 minutes to cook it in sous vide. So broccoli is also a really great um, sous vide option to cook with, so we're going to be using broccoli. I also have prepped some um, parsley. I'm leaving the parsley whole, as you can see here, uh, because we're going to pull the parsley out at the end. We're just trying to get some of the flavoring of the parsley. I have one green onion chopped here, and then I have some oranges sliced, as well as an orange whole. I'm gonna show you how to make a flower out of an orange peel. So some fun things that we're gonna be doing today. Also have a full piece of rosemary. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stick that in our bag for flavoring. And I have a half a teaspoon of garlic that we're gonna stick in there. And then I, for fun, grabbed an onion. And I did another onion tower. Amazing. Uh, thank you, thank you. My audience, there's a live audience today of one. Okay, uh, but the live audience today is clapping, that's so nice. Uh, but we're also gonna put this in here, again, adding some flavor, and it'll be a really pretty garnish. As you're bringing your reduction to a boil, you want to be whisking it, and don't cover it, uh, because we're going to be reducing it. All right, we are going to be reducing it by half. Now, let's go ahead and see what do we have going on for comments. Who's joining us on this lovely Good Friday? 
We have Julie watching, Angelo Julie, watching. Julie and Angelo, welcome. So nice to have you guys here. And in our challenge group, we have Kathleen is with us. Mary, uh, Lenore. Kathleen, Mary, Lenore, welcome all of all of you guys, Sarah all you ladies. Schomburg. Sarah from Schaumburg. Welcome, Sarah from Schaumburg. That must be uh, Sarah, the manager from Schaumburg. Mm -hmm. Yes, great, great, great. We have um, Mary saying she's just she is just watching tonight. She's got to go shopping this weekend. Okay. But she is asking, how safe is cooking in a plastic ziplock? I thought cooking in plastic releases toxins in the food. That's a good question. So um, you do want to get a, um, a BPA free plastic. Okay. Uh, that's one thing. And the other thing, since we are 135 degrees, is hot, but it doesn't burn. All right, so what you're gonna find, it's, a, it's a not as hot of a temperature. So I wouldn't wanna cook in a Ziploc bag like in a microwave or something like that um, where the plastic's gonna melt. And then when you're, if you're using a burner, um, then what you're gonna wanna do is like paper clip or paper clip, like get a clothespin and clip to the outside of your container um, because what you wanna be careful that you also don't do, um, you'll wanna be careful that you don't um, um, have it have the plastic sit on the bottom because then it could melt the plastic being close to the burner all right so I've got a nice if you look here I, you can see I've got a nice rolling boil going with my reduction all right and to reduce this is going to take us about the entire time since I've got such a nice boil what I want to do is turn it down to low to turn it down to a simmer you see how immediately we get rid of that so my reduction sauce is at a simmer and this technique is is there's two techniques that we're learning today we're learning uh, sous vide cooking or in a vacuum cooking and we are also learning how to um, you do a reduction sauce, which is going to be a lot of fun. Does anybody know what happens when you reduce something? Anybody know what, what's, what's happening and why you would want to reduce it? Well, let's uh, give us a minute here to answer that one. And then typically, you know, in sous vide, you would want a vacuum. So you'd want to get a vacuum sealer. And um, the plastic that they use in vacuum sealers is also a little bit more hardy. Um, so it's a little bit easier to cook in a vacuum with a vacuum sealer. I don't have a vacuum sealer, so a Ziploc is what I'm going to be using, and it works. Uh, but I will say the vacuum sealer is going to be better, especially if you're going to be cooking for a long time. So if you're going to be, uh, for some sous vide cooking, it's an hour to two hours to three hours. Um, so in those cases, you know, using the proper Ziploc, uh, proper vacuum bag technique is probably going to be uh, a better option there. Make sure you take time to keep stirring your mixture. Um, my, uh, I'm going to show you how easy, I don't know if we can get a shot of this. I don't know what we see here. Hi, huh? anybody? Can they see this part? They cannot. They cannot? But they could see it from just this angle, from this camera. Right. So anyway, this is super easy to set. You hit this button and you set your time. Um, so you, you set your time, how long you want to cook it, then you set your temperature and hit start. It raises it to that temperature and then starts your time. Super, super simple. There's a, a motor in there that moves the water around, so it's mixing well. So that, that's already set. I'm already at 135 degrees there. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea, that's about, if you do straight hot water in your sink, it comes out between 120 and 130 degrees to kind of give you a reference point for the heat. All right, so here um, I'm doing a, two orange roughy fillets. As you can see here, they're beautiful fillets. I've actually never cooked orange roughy, but you know, if you're gonna be cooking orange roughy, you gotta be doing it with oranges. Seriously. Um, so here's what I'm going to be putting in. And part of the fun of sous vide cooking is the decorativeness of what we're going to be doing. So while our keeping an eye on our reduction, stirring it occasionally, we're going to go ahead and prep our sous vide here. Again, just make sure you don't burn that reduction. So keep an eye on that. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and put some stuff in here. So we've got some oranges. We're gonna put some oranges in here. Okay, like so. And the thing is, this is gonna be like the citrus blast that we're gonna have here is great. What might, uh, I'm doing broccoli in the sous vide with the fish at the same time, but what would be a good possibility, another side that maybe we wouldn't cook it in sous vide, but we would also serve with our uh, fish here. So let me know what your thoughts are on a good side. Are we on, on this camera here? Or what? No? Okay. 
Well, we, we, we can be. Right now we are. So okay. we got some questions. Yes, so, go for it. Bonnie's asking, in the reduction, mm -hmm. you have the orange juice, lemon juice, bracks, chicken broth, ginger, orange sauce. Am I missing anything? Yeah, I went ahead and added, and I didn't put this in the original instructions that I posted on Facebook, I added a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon to it. That's the only thing I did differently, I thought. Thinking through this, I really think that cinnamon is going to be a really nice um, addition to what we're doing today. So I went ahead and added a little bit of cinnamon. So great question. All right, and then so you can see how this gets. This is kind of fun because we. Uh, it's really a pretty way of of cooking, as you can see here. So we're laying out some of the uh, things that we're cooking in. Uh, I'm going to break this in half. We're going to put some of this parsley in here. Uh, sorry, parsley and then some rosemary in there. A little bit more parsley. And again, this is just so we get all of these really intricate flavors in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in. This is going to be kind of fun. Break this in half. Put some cinnamon sticks in here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put my garlic in there. Try to spread it between the two fish. There we go, some garlic in here. All right, I'm going to put some green onion in here. Christina's asking, uh, wait, the flavor gets, oh, that's the a a a answer for why do we uh, reduce. And it? what was the answer? Because the flavor gets stronger. stronger. Yeah. The flavor does get stronger, and um, one of the things when we're, de like if, if you were to try this when, when it was originally made, um, you would find that it was very salty, and when you reduce it, it, the sugars come out more. So we have the two juices of two oranges in here, and we want a little bit of the sweet with the salty. So, but very good. We want to bring out the flavors even more and enhance and make them more intense when we're dealing with anything with sugar that magnifies it. So most recipes um, with this type of reduction would also put brown sugar in there. We're not doing the brown sugar side of this. Okay, so you can see what I've got going on here so far. It's super, super, super pretty looking here. We'll get our other, this camera here. By the way, if you're joining on our Facebook page, if you join our 20 day challenge group, you get to see all the different camera angles and everything we got going on here. All right, I have my burner at about a three. Mine goes up to a seven. So we're, we're on the low medium heat. Um, I wanna see some steam rising and, and you know a little bit of a simmer here and there. So just keeping that going and mixing that up. I'm gonna go ahead, my temperature's dropped down to about 130, so let me show you how easy this thing is to set. I don't know if we can get a shot of this actually being set here, Paulina. Uh, I have, uh, what are you, what are you asking? If we can get a shot of, I don't know if you can get a shot of this. And get the, there's, there's two button, three buttons on this thing. I like things that are super simple, so there's three buttons on this thing. Yep, do you see it? Yeah, it's right here. It's, okay, it's so further away, but it's... You're gonna hit this one button, and it goes between temperature and time. So my temperature, and then there's a little dial on the side. So I'm taking my temperature and I'm putting it at 135, right like so. And I hit it again, and now I'm going to set my time, which I want it for 15 minutes. So there's 15. I hit the button, and immediately it starts spinning, and it's going to heat it. You can see how it'll start to, once it figures out the temperature and as it pushes the water around, then this is going to start going up. You can see it goes up and heats it really quickly. Give it a little stir to my reduction here. What goes up? The temperature here. Oh, temperature the temperature goes, goes up. You see, okay. Yeah, you can see yeah. the temperature going up. Yeah. All right, so then I'm gonna finish. By the time I finish putting all of this, um, all the rest of this stuff in my bag, it'll be good to go. So I'm putting some purple onion in there as well. You can really put, I'd, I'd love to know what you end up putting in there, um, but purple onion also is gonna be a great addition to our sous vide cooking here. Did you grate uh, fresh ginger? I didn't. I just used um, powdered or just, yeah, just seasoning ginger. Uh, now I'm putting in my broccoli here. And, uh, you know, you just want kind of bite sized chunks of broccoli. We're surrounding it in broccoli, just like so. All right. And then uh, once I'm done packing this, I have a I have a great story to share with everybody today. We all love good stories. 
It's starting to look really good. Oh yeah. Bag of bag of goodness here. See, I just I like just love cooking like this because it's just so pretty. You can see all the colors and everything. Okay, that beeping means it's ready. Now I forgot that I need to reduce first before I put this in. So I'm going to focus on reducing. What are you reducing? I am reducing my orange um, reduction sauce. Got it. Yeah, so I'm gonna turn up the heat. We're gonna try to reduce a little faster. That means I have to be a little bit more focused on my burner over here. Otherwise, I'm gonna run into a problem with burn reduction. All right, so we're gonna be turning up the heat. You turn up the heat. You reduce a little bit faster, you just have to be a little bit more conscious of what's happening because we definitely don't want it to burn. I'll turn it down a little. And then we're, we need to put the reduction in our bag. That's why we're going to speed up the reduction process here. How's everybody doing tonight? Anybody have a... Uh, happy Good Friday. Yeah, happy Good Friday. Any plans? I know... Um, I had a few people message me saying they had plans tonight and they're going to watch this later because they had uh, prayer meetings and some different uh, services and stuff going on. So let me know. Yeah, we're going plans. out later. We're going to go bowling into the movies. Evidently, we're going bowling into the <laughs> movies tonight. I'm not sure where we're finding that uh, underground bowling alley. <laughs> VR. Yeah, virtual reality. All right, so cooking this a little faster. I have this turned up to a six now, uh, just trying to get as fast as a reduction as possible. One thing that you will want to make sure we do as well is we want to make sure we cool this off because if we pour this in boiling, we're going to boil right through our bag. So just something else to keep in mind here. So you can see, if you see this view, you can see I'm getting some uh, really, really, really good rolling boils going on over here. Keeping my mixture going so we don't burn. Keeping everything moving. And you, we don't want to burn what's what's starting to um, formulate here is you can start to see, it's hard to tell, but you can, if you're looking closely, you can kind of see some sugar starting to form. And it's the sugar that's probably going to be the first thing to burn. So we want to make sure we keep things moving so we don't burn our sugar. And man, as this is cooking, it's starting to smell a little bit like a uh, dessert over here. Mmm. Yeah, that's really good. I'm gonna come by and give it a whip. She's gonna come, Paulina's gonna come over and... Kathleen is saying happy dessert. good Friday. Oh, and Gail said I love using fruit. I made um, I made a strawberry vinaigrette. It was easy. Excellent. Yeah, so uh, one of the things you could pair with this, everybody, you could pair a nice salad with this, and you could do a orange vinaigrette. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It smells, so good. It smells really good. So yeah, an orange vinaigrette salad with some uh, um, tangerines or those little cuties in it would be delicious. If you're not on the stage, uh, lose the stage of the program, sliced um, almonds would be excellent on there or pecans would be really good on there. Um, so yeah, lots of different uh, really, really, really great options that you could do as a side with this. All right, so we're cooking along here. I'm gonna try this and we should see how we're, how we're doing here. Let that sit because that's super, super, super warm. How are you gonna um, cool it off quickly? How are we gonna that? cool it off? Ooh, let's get some ideas. What are some ideas everybody has for cooling this thing off? It's no longer cold outside. Can't just All right, set no, we can't just set it snow. outside in the snow. Mmm, smells so good. Don't burn yourself. Don't burn yourself. You won't be able to taste anything for a week. Holy crap, it's so, <laughs> it's so, like, potent. It's yeah, a good thing, but man, good. it's potent. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I don't I wake know. you up in the morning. That man, was. this is the new alarm clock. Everybody just take some of the, um... Is it supposed to yes. taste like that? Okay, so I'm going to turn it off. That's plenty strong. Mm -hmm. Wow, that will wake you up in the morning and make you say, bless Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> but again, remember, this is not a dressing. This is not something we drizzle over at the end. This is going to be infused into everything we have there. That's the point. So it should be really strong. Now, I need to cool this off. So what I'm going to do to cool this off, I need to get a, somehow, 
I need to have a container that is not this, that can cool it off quickly, um, and then I'm going to put it, put it over ice. I don't want to put ice in this because I don't want to dilute it, okay? So, a couple things. Copper transfers heat nicely, so I am going to use copper. Copper transfers heat. And I'm going to use a pan like this because it has more surface area. Um, show the pan again because it didn't have the... More pan like this because it has more surface area. <laughs> it was still not on the camera, but... One more time. Pan like this. Perfect. Perfect, because it has more surface area. I have a big thing of ice, and I'm going to, can you dump this in the trash? Yeah, and Kathleen's saying the same thing. Set the uh, bowl and ice water in the sink. Yeah. So she said that. So, well, I can toss it. All right, perfect. This is... This reduction is excellent. You should, you should, again, this is not meant to be eaten by itself. Um, so do, do consider that. I'm gonna go ahead and add my ice cubes to my big bowl here. Oh, that wasn't pan. quite, it's a little too big. My pan's a little too big. And here we go. Perfect. Want to show us what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I am adding the uh, sauce to this pan here. Let's see, where do you wish I set this? You should probably set it in a little, little camera over there. Yeah, we can get a good shot. Get a good shot. I got this all ready to go. And then we'll get this in the shot here. That's cooling off. Nice. And we'll put some water around it as well. Some cool water. That's good. It's just like, um... Let's see here, get a nice... Centimeter away from, uh... <laughs> falling out yeah. into the ice. That's good. Good job. Is that gonna help? Keep the water in? Yeah, because it's or gonna get more surface ice? area. We're, this is, um... Um, transduction heating and cooling so this is actually how our body one of the re ways our body thermal thermal regulates so the more surface area that is cold the faster it's going to transfer the heat so if I could put more water around it it's going to do a little bit a little bit better if you had a, a smaller container that was deeper that'd be even better because then you could get more surface area transferring some of that heat and then again, we want to get some of the top liquid onto the bottom and the bottom liquid onto the top because that's going to help cool it down. And we know it's cool enough when we can basically, you could stick your finger in it and it's not, you wouldn't get burned, okay? Then it's not going to melt the plastic. So we're attempting to avoid not melting the plastic. You can see how fast that's already cooling down. We've lost our steam on it, okay? Excellent. Okay, yeah, let's take a look here. Let's try this. I'm gonna put my, oh wow, we're already cool. Woo, that's Jesus. <laughs> All right. I was not expecting it to be that potent. Okay, so now um, our, our liquid is plenty cool. You can see how fast that cools. And we're gonna stick it in our bag, okay? Um, this will be interesting. I am, uh... Do you need any help? You know what? I think I got it. Good. So I'm just pouring this in very carefully, having a little angle there. Oh yeah, look at that. Nicely done. Nice. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay. Now, I'm gonna seal this just so it's sealed. My sous vide is ready. I'm gonna make sure my time is right. Adjusting my time here. You don't have to get the uh, water, not water, the air out. You have to get all the air out. Yes, we do. And I also have, you'll need some way, if you're using an actual sous vide, you'll need some way to stick it on the bottom. If you're not and you're doing heat, you gotta, this is gonna be a really involved process where you're gonna be working and making sure it doesn't burn on the sides, make sure you don't melt the plastic. It's gonna be an involved process. It's doable, but it will be involved. With this, all I need to worry about is sinking it. 
So I need to get as much air out of here as possible, okay? So let's take a look here at this other camera angle while I do this. So I'm gonna set this in here, like so, and I'm gonna open up one end of my bag, and as the water displaces it, then it's going to force the air out, okay? I think. And then while I'm doing that, the two things, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna use a spoon to push it down, and then I have, to, to for me to hold it down, I have little, granite blocks. You can see these here, little granite blocks. Okay. So I have those granite blocks to help push it all down. But you can see here when I start to submerge it and let the as much air out as possible. And then, okay, I see there's air up in this pocket, so if I can elevate this side over this one, it's gonna be able to let some of that air out. There we go. Take my spoon, push this to the bottom, and then take, oh, see we still, you see guys see the air that's still right here? I need to get more air out so it sinks better. So you can see how right up in here, I've got air, so push it down, let the air out, like so, and this is, a little challenging to see. Again, if I had a vacuum sealer, this would be a very easy process. There we go, that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna take my, push this in the bottom so it's flat, drop my granite right on top. Again, since I'm not using a burner, it's fine for that to lay right on the bottom, like so. Look at my time, make sure I have 15 minutes set on my timer, and that's gonna, that's gonna sous vide right there. That's what we're doing. And that's what we're doing. We want to be careful also that we don't get water inside our bag. So then it's just going to dilute our flavors. So we are cooking in sous vide. Cooking wow. in a vacuum. How well, long is this going to take? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. You know, so here's, here's a, a couple advice. Like let's say, let's say you really get into in, uh, sous vide cooking. There's different containers you can buy that are like square um, that uh, are bigger. And you can, when you vacuum seal, you can put lots of things in there. So you can put like 10 meals in, in a sous vide cooker and then um, you could prepare them ahead of time. So let's say you have a, you know, a family gathering or something and you wanna do this. Uh, first of all, you'll probably be the only friend they know that has ever done this. Um, secondly, it's really not expensive. We're talking about, uh, this is an $80 um, piece of equipment and it can just run while you do other things. You know, so right now you have 15 minutes, you could be doing a bunch of other things. You could prep those bags ahead of time, stick them in your refrigerator or stick them in your freezer, pull them out the day you're gonna use them, let them dethaw, and then stick them in there. Uh, yeah, mine, questions? Bonnie's asking, uh, mine's really salt, salty, do I keep on cooking it? Uh, it's, if you, bought, was that Bonnie? Bonnie, if you try your, um, just, you know, just a little bit on a spoon, if you try it, and it makes you say, bless Jesus, then it's ready. <laughs> Basically, it's going to taste really salty, but again, we are infusing, and when we infuse food, it has to be super strong. Just like when you use a marinade for like chicken or something, if you were to just drizzle that marinade as like a, like a condiment, it's like way too much, but as a marinade, it's perfect. So if it's really, really, really strong, it's probably perfect. All right. And then Gail's asking, could we also cook this in foil in the oven? Absolutely, Gail. This would be great. That's a great uh, great comment there, Gail. You could do the exact same thing. Your flavors, they're going to be a little bit different, but it still is going to work really well. Um, I would look up just what to bake fish in foil in the oven is. It's probably going to be more like 350, um, but then we did some fish before in foil, um, and there's some techniques you can use there. But yeah, you can put all this in a foil. You can put your, your reduction sauce in there. But uh, for those of you who did the fish in a foil with us before and, we're, and you do it, you're gonna do this as well, you're gonna find that there is, a, is quite a bit of difference in the flavor complexities. This way of cooking, you really can't infuse flavor better than, than uh, sous vide cooking. That's why, um, that's why it makes it so great. And it's difficult to overcook in sous vide. It's pretty easy to, to overdo fish in an oven. Um, this is a little bit better, and then it's also super fast. We're talking about a 15-minute cook here. 
Um, so it's a really, really fast process, typically, um, with at least with fish. Uh, some, like I said, there's some things that take quite a bit longer. Um, when you're done with this too, if you want grill marks, you could stick this on a really hot grill. You could stick your fish into a flash grill, maybe like 30 seconds on each side, just to get some grill charring if you, if you like that flavor or taste. And while that's happening, I want to teach you, well, I want to also bring out our next flavor. Oh, I Zubia. already brought it out. Oh, you already brought it out. Never mind. Uh, you picked out the one you wanted to try next. I figured... I think strawberry lemonade is going to go better. Strawberry lemonade. So our show has been brought to you by Zevia, And they pay us a lot for this. So. But anyway, um, this is their new kids line. I know Bonnie just ordered some drinks. Uh, she ordered our hop tea that tastes like, kind of tastes like a hoppy beer. Some of the Zevia to try. So anyway, this is the kids line. And we were just talking about how perfect of a size this mm -hmm. can is. And we were just yesterday talking about... How yeah. I hope the other flavors would come in in like these sizes. So it's like the perfect amount. We will make a request yeah. to Zevia, and obviously, since since we we're have such, such a big, big deal, influence, huge influence, they might listen. They may. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's try this. This is uh, strawberry lemonade. Strawberry lemonade. For strawberry those of you tea. who are watching first time with us, uh, Zevia is. Uh, it's approved for uh, lucid stage. It has no other artificial colors, no artificial dyes. It has no sugar or artificial sugars. Zero calories, all around, just really, really tasty. Look at this, how clear it is. Again, this is strawberry lemonade, so we would expect it to see a pink color, but it is clear. So it's a great, uh, it's a great treat for the children. That's not going to addict them, um, and it's just going to be something tasty for them and not uh, something bad for them. It's a really nice, nice smell to it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Tastes like candy once again. This one tastes like candy too. They've all kind of tasted. But what like candy does this one remind you? Well, yesterday it was Jolly Ranchers. Um, the day before that was like a you know those dreamsicle. Yeah. And today. Today it tastes like pop rocks. Strawberry pop rocks. You know the ones you stick in your mouth and they pop. Yeah, I don't remember mm -hmm. what they tasted like as a kid. Mm. So like most recent candy that I ate, you know, this would taste like it would be like. Starburst? Starburst. Starburst. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. It kind of tastes like the pink Starburst. It does. It does, the pink one. It's really yummy. Mm -hmm. Very yummy. Cheers. Cheers. So, mm, Paulina, well, let's read some comments and then I have a story for everybody. Sure thing. You know the only downside to sous vide cooking? If you can't smell it. Like there's no smell coming out of there. So that is interesting. Mary said, yay, pa Paulina, so I don't, hi, Mary. I think she enjoys seeing me on camera. Uh, Let's be real, she's so sweet. I'm sure she does. <laughs> and we have Gail is asking, so the kids' line is a lot sweeter. The kids' line is sweeter, yes. It definitely is sweeter, but it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these are um, seven and a half ounces, these cans. So the typical can is 12. Mm -hmm. This is really perfect. I mean, like we split this and it's perfect, I think. Yeah, it's just like a, it's like a treat. treat drink. Yeah. Like it's not something I'd be like, oh, I want to satisfy my it's like thirsty a, Yeah, it's quench. like, oh man, I was just working all day in the fields. Let me come in and get a strawberry lemonade with mini on it. <laughs> but maybe you do. I don't know. Maybe you you do. could do that. And th by the way, this would count towards your water if you're on the lucid stage of the Vitalite program. It would. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. This it's, it's just, tasty. yeah, because what does it have in it? Nothing. It's so crazy. I know. And for, um, for added thing. fun, you could add some adult beverage to this, and it would also be pretty I tasty. think this would really go well with a Tito's. Tito's? Yeah, mm -hmm. Tito's vodka. Vodka, she knows but all about the Tito's. But since this hasn't been sponsored by t t Tito's, Tito's, we're not going to be pouring in it. You Plus, know. we want Especially to be able to like, no, finish like, our cooking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So. All right. Um, so, did you hear, since it is Good Friday, I thought I would tell a joke about God, Jesus, and Moses. Oh, boy. Glad that Jane's not here. No, 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 no. This is such a good <laughs> joke. She's going to so, watch this later. So. so, God, Jesus, and Moses all okay. decided for Good Friday... They were going to go play golfing, of course. It's like the tradition. 
So, you know, Moses gets up first, and, you know, he lines up, and, man, he, he hits the ball, and, and there's this big lake in front of the green. He hits the ball, and it lands right in the middle of the water. You know, typically, if you're a golfer, by the way, if you're a golfer, give me a hashtag golf. But typically, if you're a golfer, you hit it in the water, you know, you got to take a stroke pedal, they pull it out, and, you know, it's just this whole thing. So, Moses, of course, he walks to the edge of the water, and he goes like this, and he takes his club like a staff, and he you know, shoves it down to the ground, and the water parts. And he walks across to the middle of the pond, picking up a few extra golf balls as he went, but he walks to the middle of this pond, he finds his golf ball, and the ground is, of course, perfectly dry, because they walked across on dry, land, dry ground. He takes his um, pitching wedge, hits that baby up there, boom, hole in two. Moses is a great golfer. Nice. Well, Jesus gets up. Jesus hits the ball, same thing, he kind of shanks it and it lands right in the middle of the water and it skips a couple times and it, and it kind of rolls on top of the water and it lands perfectly on a lily pad right on top of the water, but right in the middle of the pond. Well, of course, Jesus can walk on water, so he just goes and he walks out on the water and he stands next to the lily pad and he hits the ball and it dribbles up onto the green and it goes in hole in two. Jesus is a great golfer. Nice. Then God gets up. And he hits the ball, and same thing. It goes right in the middle of the pond. Splash. And everybody's like, well, we're all hitting the first shot the same. And then all of a sudden, this fish out of nowhere just came and, and swallowed the ball. And then the fish swam up to the, sur to the surface, to the edge of the green, and it spit the ball out. And then a frog came, and a frog took and carry the ball, jumping with the ball on its back all the way to the hole and left it right on the edge. And then these snails came out of the ground and they pushed the ball into the hole. And he got a hole in one. Moses looks at Jesus and he says, ah, man, I hate playing golf with your dad. That was so good. <laughs> uh, so hopefully a little, hey, by the way, not only is that a fun story, it is biblically accurate. <laughs> Just wanted right. to throw that out there. Of course it is. Yeah, of course it is. All right, so while I have four minutes left on my sous vide cooking here, and uh, I wanted to teach you guys this really cool trick, how to make a flower out of an orange peel. Okay? What do we got here? So before I start with that, we're going to see what we got going on for comments. Um... Well, since we're delayed, we, nobody's laughing yet, but that's because they haven't uh, oh, heard nobody's, the joke yet. Oh, they're still waiting to hear yeah, the joke. I'm well, I bet, what about this one? What about this one? I bet th these people here are probably laughing so much. Oh, laugh, yeah, LOLs everywhere. Everywhere. There's so many people la laughing out loud right now. Oh my goodness, everybody's got all these laughing comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did we really have no laughers? <laughs> yeah. Come on, people. Not on this group, but maybe, you know, everybody in the uh, challenge group is going to think you're super funny. So I'll check how many laughing comments people have to do. All right, well, I need a close-up of my hands for this next portion. Sure thing. Sweet thing. I'm going to show you how to make this nice flower um, out of an orange peel. And uh, so this is it's kind of a fun technique to learn how to do. So um, where should I stand? Where would you like me? Is right here fine? Yeah. Is that okay? Right. Are you going to be going on this camera? Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to not on, so you have the end of the orange that that has the bigger pit and the one that's kind of smaller. We want to do start on the smaller end of the orange and we're going to start by just kind of going around. I'm using, this is where a paring knife, you know, we talked about knives the other day. This is where a paring knife would come in really handy and I'm kind of going in a spiral motion. So I've got a nice little base here started. So I got a little hat kind of come on. flipped off. Come on here. More here? Yeah. Right here? Oh, yes. And there we go. And then I'm just going to work on I'm peeling my orange, OK? Just like so. And then when you're doing this and you got a nice paring knife, you use, don't push as much as saw. So it's going to be the sawing motion that helps you peel, just like so. All right, and we're just gonna peel this orange just like this. So not only do you get to peel your orange, but we're also gonna make something really fun with it. And this is gonna be part of our plating that we're gonna do. 
if you choose to do this with me. There's lots of different things you can do with orange peels for garnishes and decorations. Plus just cutting the orange gives such a nice bright smell to the room. It's fantastic. I love the smell of orange. There we go. And then I'm going to end it like cutting like that, leaving this part. Okay, so this is what I've got now, my orange. And I'm gonna start with this end here. This is gonna be the bottom of my orange. I'm gonna start with, or my flower. I'm gonna start with this end here and very tightly roll this up. Can you do me a favor and grab the lighter? Where from? Back, later oh, in the back. Sure. All right, so you just roll on this bad boy up like so. And then when you get done, this is its little seated base. And boom, we have a flower. Wasn't that easy and fun? Plus we got, we released some great, you know, orange smell in here. And then um, what I'm gonna do with my cinnamon sticks is my cinnamon sticks are going to serve as a garnish. Here. That's a huge cinnamon stick. We're talking about tree barks here, holy cow, They're huge. All right, cinnamon stick is gonna serve, so I'm gonna put that in the corner of my plate. I'm gonna use this as the base of the flower. Like so. And then um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use parsley as a little bit of green on each end. Are you making a human? No, I'm just making a flower. It's like oh. a pretty orange flower. Okay. I don't know why it's a human. Those are my enemy hands. There we go. Doesn't that look wonderful? I used on the other one, I used a little bit of broccoli for my flour. But something really simple, something fun, something to spice up your cooking a little bit. No pun intended. All right, now at this point in time, my thing beeped, my sous vide cooking beat. So I'm gonna use some tongs because again, 135 degrees, it's pretty warm. It's probably not gonna burn you like really bad, but you know, just sticking your hand all the way in there, probably not advisable. So some tongs. I'm going to grab out my bag here, okay, let's see here, and then what I'm checking here before I like totally say everything's done and drain my water and all that stuff, I want to make sure the fish is done. I am just, I've never seen this type of cooking. So I am feeling the broccoli right now. And broccoli needs a little bit more time for my preference. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, it smells good. And fish needs a little bit more time as well. I my fillets are a little thick. Mm. How, so. how do you know? Is it by touching it? So good question. Let me pull out. I'll pull out the fillet, and I'm going to show you on the plate because I don't want to continue to play a guessing game with y'all. Um, but let me show you what it's what it's supposed to look like when, well, let me show you what it looks like right now and kind of what we're looking for. And let's see how it works out. And then I'm going to probably put this in for another, based upon how it is right now. And some of it's based on how much other stuff I put in there. So that's going to also increase the cooking time. But based upon the way it looks right now, I'm going to say it needs another, uh, probably another 10 minutes to cook everything in here. All right. So let me put this over here and I'm going to show you what I'm looking for. Okay. So when when fish is cooked, can we see this over here or do I need to move we it? We can see it, yeah. Okay. When fish is cooked, it Hold flakes. On. Just move it over a little bit like that. Okay. There we go. When fish is cooked well, it flakes when you press on it. Okay. So we're not really getting flaky. And if I kind of cut into a thicker part, okay, let me just cut all the way in so you guys can see this, okay? This this here. You know, and, and even feeling the temperatures, it's warm, but it's not, it doesn't feel cooked. Okay, so when I look at this here, this is telling me it's not cooked. Now, you not, you see how we've got a really beautiful glaze, though, starting on the top of that fish? It is, mm -hmm. but I'm just having issues. Like, if I was here alone, I'd be like, oh, it might be done, without, like, tasting it. 
So what is it exactly that I'm looking for? So um, what we'll do is I will post a video, another video just of the flakiness at the end so you can compare the difference because okay. when I come in here, it should flake off, it should like, flake everything. off like everything, like this isn't flaking. Got it. And, and then honestly you can just see this isn't done. Okay. Okay. So we're going to stick this back in. I'm going to do another 10 minutes and uh, see how that goes. So let me just stick this in. We'll do another 10 minutes here, then we'll come back live when it's cooked, just so I can show you the difference. So let me get this nestled back in there. If you had a normal thinner fillet, you'd probably be good right now. Um, I'm doing two fillets, so that's gonna, you know, factor in as well. And then I've got all that broccoli and everything else. So um, all of those things make it a little bit longer as well as I don't have a vacuum sealed bag. If I actually had a vacuum sealed bag, it's gonna be closer, so it's gonna get more uh, more um, cooking time. All right, so we're gonna place this thing back in. Ooh, oh, wait. Mary's got a joke. Mary's got a joke. Well, let's hear it, Mary. Why did the orange go out with the prune? Why did the orange go out with the prune? Mm. Why did the orange go out with the prune? I, I have no idea. I don't know either. I don't know. I, I, I don't have anything. Like, I don't have anything clever or anything. Why did the orange go out with the prune? We'll have to uh, wait a minute because there's a delay. Let me get our answer here. And then Mary's up saying, thanks for taking the fish out to show us. Really helpful to new cooks. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we will take it out again when it's cooked. That way everybody knows what it's supposed to look like. So does anybody else know why the orange went out with the prune? I do not know why the orange went out with the prune. Because they got orange, I don't know, I can't think of anything. Oh, and Kathleen's saying, uh, so I opt to pan sear the cod. I marinated in, it in the reduction sauce. Ooh. Um, I steamed the broccoli in water and some of the reduction sauce. I believe this is the best cut I've ever eaten. Oh, all right. Who, which was that, Mary? Kathleen. Kathleen. All right, Kathleen. That sounds so amazing. Glad you were able to uh, use some of this and uh, for adapting as well uh, for this, for what you have available, what you can cook with. I just, I love that. And that's what's so fun about um, about this challenge and about this group and how creative everybody is. So great. Hey, you know what? I did so much better at submerging that this time. Did we, did we figure out why the... Yeah. You ready for the I'm ready. Time? I'm ready. Why did the orange go out with the prune? Because you couldn't find the date. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is good. I like that. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> uh, nice. All right, it's I just so set this over 10 minutes. It's so appropriate for our orange infused. It is so appropriate for our orange infused. Um, delicacy today. Very, very good. All right, everyone. Um, I will be back in a little bit, but I just want to say uh, for all of you that joined me today, thank you so much for joining me. Tomorrow, we are going to be doing um, a very simple but very tasty dish and a dish that you can reduplicate and make a bunch of it and freeze it and all sorts of stuff. We are going to be doing stage one, uh, lose it stage of the program, approved meatloaf. Uh, this is also another great meal to hide vegetables in to that person in your life that may not like vegetables, especially things like spinach and your dark green leafy vegetables, kale. This is a great dish to add some of those things in. So if you have some spinach, if you have some kale, um, throw that in a food processor ahead of time, get it nice and small. We're going to be adding that in and this is a super fun, super simple dish. Um, and then if you want to pick out, or maybe you have something like this already, I'm going to be using little tins like this to um, bake these in the oven. Or actually, I probably use my Ninja Food Grill. Where'd you um, get those? I got those at the Jewel. This could be Jewel. most grocery stores uh, will carry these little tins. You could also use bigger ones, glass, different things like that. Just may change up your cooking time a little bit. But this is a really fun, easy, simple uh, go-to uh, way to create meatloaf. So thank you again for joining. Katie Parker is on. She's Katie, hi. hey Katie, so nice to have you on. We will be back in just a few minutes. Uh, making sure our fish is done so that way you can see what done fish in the sous vide looks like. My name is Davis Jasper, the founder of the Vital Life Program, reminding you that today is the day to live a vital life.